Hello and welcome. Today we're working on long-term liabilities, which is chapter 14 of Intermediate Accounting. We're going to work on problems, the pricing of bonds, the present value of bonds, and bond yield. So we're going to talk about a bond discount, a bond premium, a bond sold at par, and then trying to figure out how we can calculate the yields. This is all time value of money concepts. Hello, I'm Jeff, where I help you finally learn financial literacy. So let's talk about liabilities. Liabilities, defined by the FASB, is a present obligation for possible, probable future transfer or use of cash, goods, or services. It's unavoidable and the transaction has already occurred. Current liabilities are one year or less. Long-term liabilities are due after the operating cycle or one year, whichever is longer. So we're in chapter 14, which is long-term liabilities. So things like bonds payable, mortgage notes payable, and so on. So let's talk about a bond. A bond is just simply a debt instrument that's issued by a, a corporation or a government entity. They have designated maturity and a specified interest rate. And bond payments are usually made semi-annually. So let's look at a bond certificate. So let's pretend this is a bond certificate. So it's Acme Corp for $500,000, 20 years, 6% semi-annual interest, and it was issued on January 1, 2020. All right, so let's think about what we know. This is actually printed on the bond, and then there's some other market information. So we don't know the yield for this bond. We know what interest it's, it's going to pay. We do not know the yield. We'd love to know the market rate, the effective rate, or the yield. All that means the same thing. And so we don't know the price of the bond or the market price or the present value of the bond. So let's see what we do know. Everything here in green, we know. So the bond issuer or the borrower is Acme Corp. The face amount is $500,000. Now, some people think, well, this is how much they're borrowing. Well, this is actually how much they're promising to repay in 20 years. So the term is 20 years. Now it's going to be split up into semi-annual periods. So really it's going to be 20 years or really 40 periods. So we're going to make 40 interest payments. If we're ACME issuing the bonds, we're going to make 40 payments. The contract rate or the coupon rate is the 6%. That's not the same thing as the yield, which is a market number. We have to look in the market or depends on uh, buyers and sellers, supply and demand. So the contract rate is 6%. That means this bond is built, the interest payments, on 6%. So here's how we calculate the interest payments. We're going to take $500,000 times 6% divided by 2. So let me just show you the math, $500,000 times 0.06 divided by 2. We're going to make interest payments of $15,000 every six months. Whoever purchased this bond, if you buy the bonds, then you're going to receive $15,000 every six months. Now, typically bonds are sold in 1,000 increments. So this is really uh, probably made up of 500 certificates of $1,000 each. And that's a promise to pay $500,000 at the end of 20 years and along the way make the stream of interest payments. So it matures in 20 years. So let's actually calculate a bond discount. So let's assume 7% is the yield. If we know the yield is 7%, we can plug this into our time value of money. We know the periods per year is two. The number of periods is going to be 20 years times two. The interest rate, the effective rate or the market rate is 7%. This bond is going to be sold to yield 7%. If you buy the bond, you're going to receive $15,000 payments and you're going to receive at the end of 20 years, you're going to receive $500,000. So what is the price of the bond right now? Well, this is a present value calculation. So this is PV. So we need to know the rate. The rate is going to be 7% divided 
divided by 2. This is semi-annual, so you need to make sure it's semi-annual. Now the number of periods is going to be 40. We already know that. The payment is going to be that 15000 and the future value is 500000 The payments happen at the end of the period, so we're going to put a zero. And our answer will come out to be negative. Now this is the proper way that time value of money works. So it's saying if you pay 446612 then you'll receive 7% if you receive the payments on time of $15,000 40 times and then $500,000 at the end of 20 years. So this bond is yielding 7%. Now, we don't really need this to be a negative number, so we can make it, I put a negative in front of it. So that's the answer. The present value of the bond is 446000 That's our answer. Now, this is said to be a discount. The bond is a $500,000 bond, and it's only selling for 446000 So that's discounted. It's discounted because the yield is larger than the coupon rate or the contract rate at 6%. All right, let's continue. Same problem, except we'll change one thing. We'll change one thing where it's 5% is the, the yield in the market. It's a 5% yield, so everything is the same. We need to calculate present value here. So I'm going to go up to the top and use the formula bar here. Let's say present value is equal to the rate, which is 5% divided by 2. We need the number of periods, which is 40. We need the payment is 15,000. The future value is 500,000. And the payments happen at the end of the period. It's gonna come out negative, but it's a negative 562,000. So we're gonna make the answer positive just by changing the sign. So the answer is 562,757. So this bond is sold at a premium because it sold for more than 500,000. Now what kind of rate of return? If you paid 562,757, what kind of rate of return are you going to receive if you hold this bond for 20 years? Well, you're going to receive 5%. Even though the bond pays 6%, you're going to yield 5% because you paid a little bit more than 500,000. Now, let's do a third calculation, what if the bond is sold at par? That means the 6% and the 6% are the same. This is the yield and this is the coupon rate. So at 6%, what will we have? Well, we're going to have the same calculation. It's going to be present value. It's going to be the rate is 6% divided by the 2. The number of periods is 40. The, the payment is 15,000. The future value is 500,000. The payments happen at the end of the period, so we put a zero. So this is going to be exactly 500,000. To get 6% rate of return on a 6% bond, you just have to pay the exact face amount. So this bond is deemed to be sold at par. I'm going to make it negative so I can show that just as a whole number, a positive number of 500,000. So the, the price of the bond when the yield in the market is 6% is 500,000. So we have a couple of rules we want to make sure that you know. If the yield is greater than the coupon rate, then it's sold at a discount. That was our first example. If the yield is less than the coupon rate, that was a premium. That was our second example. If the yield equals the coupon rate, then it's sold at par. For example, let's put the numbers to it. The first example, the yield was 7% in the market. The coupon, the bond is built at 6%. So to get a 7% return, you have to discount it. So it went down below the 500000 If the yield is 5%, people would want to buy your bond and they would drive the price up and the yield goes down to 5%, and so that's a premium. That's the second example we did. The third example we just did, if the yield is 6% and the coupon is 6%, then 
the bond is going to be priced at par, exactly $500,000. All right, let's switch it a little bit. Now, we know this is our bond, but we have two things in the market, the yield and the market price. What if we know the market price, can we back in to find the yield? Yes, it's easy to do. So let's just assume, I'm gonna have several different numbers here. Let's assume that the price is $466,000. If you paid $466,000 and you held the bond for 20 years, what is the yield you would receive? So I'm gonna put in the 466,000. Remember, this probably should go in as a negative number. Uh, we can build this on the, the formula here. Now, the formula for interest rate in Excel is rate. So we're gonna do rate. So rate, the number of periods is gonna be 40. The payment is gonna be 15,000. The present value is going to be, we're going to make it a negative 466,000. The future value is 500,000. The type is end of the period, and we can guess, and we don't have to guess, so I'm just going to leave that blank. Now the answer comes out to be 3.31 that semi-annually, so we need to make multiply this times two to make it an annual return. So at 6.62%, at 6.62%, you would pay 466 and you would achieve that 6.62%. So we can do the same thing all the way across. So let's calculate a couple of times. Let's do um, a couple of times more to make sure you understand how this works. So what if it's 485,000? Let's do the, the math again. We're going to do rate. Rate is equal to the number of periods, which is 40, and then the payment is going to be a positive 15,000. The present value is going to be a negative 485,000. The future value is going to be 500,000. The payments happen at the end of the period, so we want it to be zero. And we can guess if we want to. Let's just guess uh, 0.04. That number is not going to matter. It turns about out to be 3.13 for the semi-annual. We need to multiply it times 2 to make it an annual rate. And so 6.27. If the the bond is a 6% bond, but the price, the yield is 6.27. The price of the bond will go from 500 down to 485,000. All right, I think we should be able to just work all the way across. Let me copy across. This answer should be exactly what? 500,000 for a $500,000 bond. It should be exactly 6%. That is correct. And as the price goes up, the yield goes down. We can just copy across. If the market yield is 5.79%, the bond will be priced at 512,500. What if it's at 550,000? Well, the yield goes down to 5.19. All right, so that's how you do, on Excel, you do present value of a bond and you can do the bond yields. Thanks for watching.